Please bring me water. Command fetching water activated. Thank you. You're welcome, Caroline. Now let's get started. Before we get started, this is your reminder, please put your devices on mute as I will be using the wake word frequently in this video. This video is actually a part three of my Lego Mindstorms series. If you've missed the first two videos, please go back and watch those first. Those are the setup videos to get to this tutorial. I will link to them below. Now, what is Lego Mindstorms? It is a builder's kit for kids and adults, and now they've added voice activation with Amazon Echo, and I have turned this robot into a robot that can fetch me things, such as water, and I've also added a few other commands, which I will demo in this video for you. If you've watched the first two videos, you'll know that this is actually not the robot that I showed you in the first two videos. That was called the Everstorm, actually. This is called the gripper. So the first step in our tutorial is actually to take apart the entire Everstorm from the last video and then put together something called the gripper. Now, how do I know what the gripper is or where the gripper is? Well, let me show you on my computer. Let me start screen record right now. Uh, and this is the home edition, not the educational edition. Um, and I will link to how you can purchase your own Lego Mindstorm set below. Disclaimer, the Lego Mindstorm set is not an inexpensive device. It retails for about $350 here in the US. Once you have a Lego Mindstorms, you can go to lego.com and I'll link to this below, but here are robots that you can create from the 601 piece standard Lego Mindstorms set. Just to show you, there is the tracker, the spiker, the raptor, the gripper. And so we are making the gripper in this video. If you've watched the first two videos in my series, we actually created the Everstorm robot and we did some cool stuff with that. So please go back and watch those because uh, the setup to link your device with your computer and your Amazon Echo are all in that video. I'm not gonna go over that again. If you hit download here, you will get this PDF and it will show you how to make a gripper. Now there are 124 pages in the gripper. I only worked until I got it to this point, which is page 51. Essentially all I did was get the large motors working so it could move forwards and backwards and turn right and left. And then I also reconfigured the medium motor to be a gripper. So that's essentially all this is. And if you watch the, you know, as I keep on referring to the previous video in the Everstorm, the medium motor was the robot arm and then the large motors were configured to move forwards and backwards, left and right. Page 53 and 54 and 56 right here is this little guy, and this guy is just something for the gripper to pick up. It really stopped at page 56, which is really mission number two. That's, that's the first step, which will probably take you the longest amount of time to do, so uh, why don't you pause the video and then come back later? And obviously I had to turn off the device while I was uh, putting together my gripper. The next thing I did just to make sure it worked is I pulled out my micro SD card. So this is everything I had in the previous videos. We would uh, load our Python programs onto our micro SD card. If you pull out the micro SD card and then you turn on the device, then it goes into a demo mode and I'll show you the demo that comes with mission two for this Ripper device. All right, there it goes. All right, so it says, I don't know if you can see this right here, but it does say uh, demo on the screen. So what I'll do is I'll just put my little device here and I'll hit the, I'll hit the middle button, which should spawn the demo. Okay. That is the demo that comes with it. Why should we do this first? Well, I just wanted to make sure that the gripper was in the right position. So it kind of resets everything. And you just have to do this once, the very, very first time you put it together. Because if you put this together and then it, your, your gears are just a little bit out of place, uh, this project won't work uh, with the way that I've configured the code. To reset everything, I, re I recommend you run the demo first. We want to get to voice commands, right? That's what this tutorial is about. So I'm going to hit the power off button and it's gonna power down. I'm gonna wait for it to completely power down now. 
our gripper robot has now been completely powered down. I'm going to insert my micro SD card. Now, if you notice a piece of tape that I attached to my micro SD card, it just makes it easier for me to get it in and out of my robot. And then I'll hit the middle button and it should power right back up. It is gonna take a few minutes for everything to reboot. Right. Excellent. Now my robot is online and I can look on my computer here and I can see that it's connected to my EV3. It does automatically connect, but it is something I set up in a previous video and you'll have to get this working before it will uh, get to this state. Now it automatically reconnected via Bluetooth from my computer over to my robot. We're gonna go into our Visual Studio Code. And what I did was, as we last left off, we were working on something called Mission 3. And essentially all I did was I took Mission 3 and I cloned it or duplicated it and I made it into something called Mission Claw. Because really we're working with the claw here to grip things, to pick things up and to close things down here. All right, so now we need to modify Mission 3 into Mission Claw so that we can control this to pick things up and bring them back to us. All right, how about that? Let's do that now. The first thing I did was modify the Python code that controls the robot. You know, if you're going step by step, essentially there's the front end, which is uh, when you're speaking to your Amazon Echo device. And then next it goes into a Lambda function and from the Lambda function, it gives commands uh, to the device via the Python code. Let's start with the Python code and I'll go over some highlights of the changes I made. Of course, I'll make all of the code here available to you and you can just and copy and paste it into your Python code. I used the same motors, so I didn't actually change any of the motor functions because it is medium motor and I did continue to use move tank. All right, so you've got output A, output B, output C. That's right here across the top. Output A is the medium motor, B and C are the side motors which are what move the robot forward and backwards. Okay, simple as that. Then I added what commands did I want it to be able to do? Well, it could already go forwards and backwards, left and right and stop. I wanted to add turn around so that when it picked up something, it would just turn around and then bring it back to me. I added that. I also added claw open, claw close, uh, water, beer, and wine. Fetching water, fetching beer, fetching wine. And that way I could say, I thought it'd be kind of funny to say, hey, uh, fetch my water. All right, excellent. So then we start getting into the claw. First of all, this medium motor right in here has different positions that it can be in so that the claw is either open or closed. The position for open is 225 and the position for close is 920. Now, how did I figure that out? I wouldn't have figured that out on my own, quite frankly. What I did was I went over to the EV3 dev GitHub page and I went into the demo and then I went into robots and I went into gripper and from the gripper, I looked at their Python code and realized that they had put in their code that the open was 225 and the close was 920. Now, what is this uh, Python code that I use for myself? This is for a remote control. This Lego Mindstorms does come with remote control and this was a configuration so that you could press a button on your remote control and it would open and then it would close the gripper right here. I just reused that portion of the code. Claw open, claw close, the positions are 225, 920 and, that, and I learned that from the GitHub page. So those are the things that I brought over into my own code. If you look at my Visual Studio, I've got open, close, and then when it is connected, I want to automatically have it always just default to the open position. If you turn it around, then I want it to go 120 degrees and then uh, come back for a few seconds. In commands, I have claw open. And so I have, I'm calling the definition claw open. I'm calling the definition claw close if I want it to open or close. Those are most of the changes I made within the Python code. There's also command water, which is what you saw at the beginning of this video. And I also did modify the left turn, right turn a little bit. In the original mission three, it made a 90 degree turn, left or right, whichever one you said, and then it went for two seconds. Did not want it to do that because in the scenario where your item angled a little bit too far to the left or to the right, I wanted to be able to change it to say, hey, you know, move left 30 degrees or move right 45 degrees so you could kind of angle it so you could get to your item. So if you're, you know, using voice commands and saying, okay, go get 
this item, you want it to, and you're just a little bit off to about 10 degrees, it will now do that. Uh, so there was some trial and error to do that left by degree a little bit. And how did I figure that out? That was in motor classes. If you look at the original Python code, it says move tank. So with move tank, you have your choices of on for degrees, on for rotations, or on for seconds. Uh, I used on for degrees. In direction, right or value, you've got the direction, your degrees, and your speed. And then I defined turning. So if you turn left, you've got a speed, the percent speed uh, of zero, because that one is not moving, only the right one is moving, and then the number of degrees. So it was drive on four degrees. And I learned that in the Python EV3 dev documentation. So I'll link to that page as well. That was very useful to learn about the move tank function. I've made my changes to my Python code and I have saved it. So now it's called, mission is called pythonclaw.py. That's my code. Now I need to get it over to my gripper robot. How do I do that? Well, first of all, I, I need to make sure I'm connected via Bluetooth from my computer over to my robot. I am connected. Next, I need to reconnect between my Visual Studio to the robot. So let's do that. All right, I am connected now. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna send the workspace to the device. All right, so now I'm downloading the code or uploading the code, however you wanna look at it, into the device. Okay, now that is done. And then I need to find my mission claw, now that's been copied over, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit run. And now I have started running that piece of Python code on my gripper robot. Excellent. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is I need to change the front end code. And I need to do this through the Alexa developers console. We did this in a previous video, so I'm kind of picking up where I left off on Mindstorms. All right, so in the previous video, we created an Alexa skill called Mindstorms. It's right here. And all I did was go through and hit edit and I made some modifications to that code. Now, what modifications did I make? Well, I wanted to add claw open, claw close, right? So in under a command intent, I wanted to add a command uh, called claw open, right? So I created that, and then in the types of commands that you have, I created claw close and claw open. Then I created us a um, water and wine, of course, uh, because I wanted to pick up my bottle of water. Degrees was oh so new. Uh, so in the move command, which you haven't seen yet, I did create something where you can turn to the left, you know, by 10 degrees or so. And that makes it a little bit easier for us to voice command to pick up things. So uh, those are the intents that I created. I also created a thank you, you know, I thought that'd be nice. I wanted this to be polite robot here. I wanted to be polite to my robot. For you to make all these changes, I'll make the code available to you. and. From Visual Studio, you can either copy and paste from model.json, okay? Or you can go into your finder. Let's go back here, finder. The, the shortcut is mission claw, skilled node.js, model.json, and then drag and drop into this file. So to get to this page, you need to go down to JSON editor in your build tab of your Alexa scale. And once you have dragged and dropped your new JSON file, you'll hit save model and then you'll hit build model and that will build out your entire skill. There's still kind of the middle piece, which is the Lambda function, which is the Node.js or JavaScript code that runs once you issue a command. The build page is front end commands. I wanna be able to say turn left and it understand what I'm talking about. So this is where you're programming in like turn left, turn around, claw open, claw close. But then how does it know what to do? Once it receives that command, you need to go into code. And as shown in the last video, we've got index, package, utilities, common. We've got four different JavaScript, Node.js files here that take that command, like claw open. And from there, it knows which request you made and then it knows what to do with it. 
And if you say claw open, it knows to go and look for your Python script and then execute claw open. So this is like when it launches, it knows what to do. When you say move forward, it knows what to do. When you say claw open, it knows what to do. This code for index has been modified index. I added degrees, like how many degrees you could turn. I added claw open, claw close, and then um, bring me my water. Now all it does is it knows what to put into the Python code on this robot and tell it what to do. So it issues a command. It knows the commands. Did OSA make some response changes? So before it would say, you know, moving forward two seconds. Now it says, okay, if it's degrees, it knows to say turning left by 10 degrees. It knows to repeat that back to you. I think that's pretty cool. I also added the command, you know, bring me my water. And it says, okay, you know, command fetching water activated. Uh, so we made um, some slight changes to the responses that she'll give after you issue a command. Command. So you'll know, hey, she got my message. That is index. How do we change index from my code? Hit control A for all, control C. I'm going to copy and paste this into index on the code tab in my Alexa skill. So that's it. So once you do that, you can hit save and then you can hit deploy. So make sure you save it first completely, wait for it to finish saving, then you want to hit deploy and then you'll be deploying that JavaScript code as part of your skill. Excellent, so deployment is successful now. Excellent, so we've got our uh, front end build done. We've got our JavaScript code in the middle done, and we have our Python script running on our device right now. Alexa, launch Lego Mindstorms. Welcome, you can start issuing move commands. Forward two seconds. Forward two seconds at 50% speed. And, and see what I'm talking about here where it's, it's just a little bit off. So I'll say turn right for 10 degrees. Right turn at 10 degrees. Forward one second. Forward one second at 50% speed. Claw close. Command close activated. Turn around. Turning around. Claw open. Command open activated. And there it goes. So now we've got a series of commands that you can use to talk to your Lego Mindstorm gripper device. Claw close. Command close activated. Claw open. Command open activated. Claw close. Command close activated. Turn right. Right turn at 90 degrees. Backwards one second. Backwards one second at 50% speed. Turn right 45 degrees. Right turn at 45 degrees. Forward one second. Forward one second at 50% speed. Claw open. Command open activated. Thank you. You're welcome, Caroline. And that was another demo of my Gripper Lego Mindstorms Hackster.io project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.